I would say this is a general rule. This is a general rule. Give your mornings to God. Give your afternoons to men. Give your evenings to your family. Give your mornings to God. Start early. Don't be answering the phone. Don't be answering the email. Don't be doing all kinds of different things. Get locked in to the Bible, to your commentaries, to your sermon manuscript. And I start early. Um, that means you have to go to bed early. Um, there's going to be some divergence with age of children, etc., on this. But I, I would urge men, young men, their first five years, be disciplined. Wake up early. Study. Don't return, re start returning phone calls, all that stuff, until like 1130-ish. For me, uh, I did not go out and eat lunch with men. If you want to eat lunch with me, come into the church. I'll have a lunch prepared for you. That's going to take time to drive there, drive back, place the order, all that. Um, and then the afternoons, return phone calls, write emails, do counseling, visit the sick, call on new members, et cetera, et cetera, staff meetings, and just line those up as tightly so there's no wasted space in between meetings. And there's always a back end to these meetings. And then, it's like me packing a suitcase. I roll up everything. So it's, I've, I've got as much in that suitcase as I possibly can. Some men just know how to get more out of a day than other men. But we all have the same amount of time. And then, when you're home, you need to be all there. You, you don't need to be sitting in the den reading a book, ignoring your kids, not talking to your wife. When you're at home play catch in the backyard, shoot baskets with your kids, wrestle on the floor, do homework, do baths, do family devotions. Be all there with your family in the evenings. And then after you tuck the kids in, talk to your wife, listen to her, um, and then try to get to sleep as early as you can. Um, and then wake up as early as you can. Mornings to God, afternoons to men, evenings to your family. Now also, not every day of the week is the same. You ask me, like, how long did it take to prepare that sermon? Um, it's not how many hours, it's which hours. Because some hours you are more productive than other hours. So you're going to know yourself. When are you the most productive and give those hours to God in your sermon preparation? Most counseling is just listening. I'm not talking. I'm just listening. And then at the end or in between things, I'll say certain things. Um, I've got to give my best hours to digging into this passage of Scripture. Um, I think better on some days of the week than I do other days of the week. Monday, I'm kind of down. Tuesday, I'm starting to crawl back up. Wednesday, I'm hitting a high point. Thursday, I'm coming back down. Friday, Saturday, I'm going back up. Mountain peaks on Sunday and Wednesday, just in what was my schedule. Sunday was King's Day. Monday was Queen's Day. And so I gave, I gave everything I had to give to the church on Sunday. I mean, I'm literally the last person leaving the building. Uh, if you want to talk to me, anybody can talk to me. You may have to wait, but I'm not leaving until the last person walks out of here. Um, if you're the deacon of the week and locking up the doors, just bring your lunch because we're going to be here a while. But I'd rather talk to you on Sunday for 15 minutes than talk to you on Thursday for an hour because the Word of God has been pressed to your heart. And you want to work while the iron's hot. But Monday was my day off. And my wife knew I would be with her. And when we had little kids, they were hanging under my arms. And I'm playing with them. Um, and so then, I'm, then starting with Tuesday, I'm starting it back up again. Doesn't mean that's the day you have to take off. But that's just how it worked out for my life in ministry. Um, but you do have to have, I think, uh, a day of 
some kind of rest. Um, and usually that's going to involve some family matters as well. Thank you.